All right, hi everyone, and welcome again to my audiovisual channel. Today, I bring you episode number seven of Conversations About Art, during which I try to find the meaning and purpose of both art and beauty through conversations with colleagues in different artistic fields. This time, I will have this conversation with Rachel Drennan, who I only Instagram know, but her work has the figure on a pedestal, as does my work, and it is well seasoned with the classical flavor of the masters, before the moder modernists came in and put way too much salt on everything. So, Rachel, thank you so very much for your time. Uh, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and tell uh, our listeners and watchers who you are and what you do. Yeah, well, first of all, thank you so much for having me on here, Gabriella. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing your name. Yes, right. that's perfect. Know. Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, thank you so much for having me. Um, and I love what you said about me. It's like, so sweet. Um, but, uh, so let's see. Um, I graduated from the Pennsylvania Academy of the Fine Arts, oh, uh -huh. um, PAFA, in 2020. Yes. And um, I'm currently continuing my education in uh, Florence, Italy, uh, at this atelier called the Charles Cecil Studio. It's um, it's uh, specializes in portraiture, so mm, um, that's like nice. fig the figure and the portrait and the human person in general is my favorite thing to do art wise. And um, I love both educations, but um, I wanted to like Pafa was great, and I think we have some teachers in common, like Roberto Asti, mm. and Patrick Connors, different people yeah. at the New Academy. Um, taught at Dan Paris. Thompson, yeah. Yeah, I think. Oh I no, he's not on Pafa. He's not in Pafa, right? He's a studio in Kaminati, but yeah, I, mean, yeah. I know who he is. Um, and yeah, that was a really great education and everything. But I wanted more of like a traditional, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. more a little more foundations. So I'm continuing my education in Italy, and yeah, that, and I yeah I prior I, like I like painting in oil and portrait. <laughs> yeah. That's lovely. Yeah. So, uh, so after having had that that uh, education at at uh, Pafa, you're you're kind of seeking out further, more traditional sort of like in quotes, you know, traditional or what is yeah. considered traditional mm -hmm. education or atelier style type stuff. Um, so, uh, what do you think you need strengthening in? I guess that's a good question. Um, I think that it's possible to never be satisfied. Like mm. no matter how much you continue learning, you'll always have a goal that, like a horizon that you need to reach. Um, but I like, I my education at PAFA gave me a lot of, like I had Roberto Osti and I learned anatomy really, like I took his class like three times, I think. <laughs> <laughs> That's and awesome. It was so great. Um, and like I had a really great painting teacher named Scott Noel. We did a lot of like impromptu, like a la prima like fast paintings together mm -hmm. and um Pafa really like has a more um like you can learn to paint there um it's like a so there's an academy there's lots of different like you there's painters draftsmen sculptors um print makers so there's like the world's your oyster like you can um mix and match do whatever you want yeah yeah and, um, develops your creativity and there's all these different teachers that have different points of view and different mm -hmm. ways of working um, so like PAFA was great but because of its flexibility and because of the way that the art world is right now where there's not like a lot of um, I don't know there's not like a lot of focus and discipline and like okay how do if I want to do something specifically like how do I do it well. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, like that is done at PAFA. I'm not saying that's not, but like if I want to like take something to the ultimate limit of doing it really, really well, like mm. that was I wasn't finding that there the way that I wanted to do something. Like not like photorealism or anything, but like right. make something feel alive. Like mm. having this sense of painting, like old masters. Yeah. Um. So I, um, when I graduated. I was like looking at all these ateliers and I've always been probably my education at PAF I've always been a little bit like wary of ateliers just because I don't know there's like very like elitist and sometimes not all the time I've met so many nice people that go to ateliers but 
um, I wasn't sure if I was going to be like pigeonholing myself into like mm-hmm. a little box and yeah. if I was going to be um, working in like a sterilized way and not being like creative and loose and throwing the paint around. <laughs> but yeah. um, <laughs> I'm naturally a very like, let's throw the spaghetti at the wall and see what sticks, like loose kind of person. <laughs> so I do need <laughs> like a little bit of rigor and structure in my life. Um, so I was looking around at different ateliers and um, I discovered the Charles Cecil Studio, which is a school that's um, led by this man named Charles Cecil. And it's like this tiny little thing. And I saw like a couple students that went there, their work, and I thought like, wow, that's really, really good. Like I want to paint like that. So mm. I didn't actually like visit the school or anything. I just like booked a plane ticket and <laughs> went there. But um, so far it's been, I've been like really learning a lot. But what I'm learning, you asked me a question that I completely forgot about. No, that's what I, I, no, I love what do I need everything to learn? you're saying, yeah. Um, and basically, yeah, like I, I, I want to learn how to like be more truthful in painting. And mm-hmm. by that, I don't mean like one-to-one, like photographic accuracy. I mean like visual accuracy and like mm-hmm. the way that I see creating that poetry on the canvas, which requires like more than just your own like spontaneity and creativity. It requires, um, I don't know, it sounds stupid probably, but no way. Um, <laughs> it requires like, it's a mixture of being disciplined and being creative. And like, I think that nowadays people are always like, oh, be creative, be creative, like, mm-hmm. do your thing. Mm-hmm. And I think that's wonderful, but I think it's stupid <laughs> because if you're, like, writing a creative writing, like, you can't write a good story or a good essay without knowing, like, grammar and spelling. Like, right. break all the rules you want, but you still have to be able to communicate. Yeah. And if you are, like, mumbling or speaking your own invented language that no one lo- knows the keys to... No one has the keys to, then you might be self-expressing yourself, but you're not communicating and you might be being creative, but like, are you? So um, <laughs> I think the key to being creative is also being able to communicate effectively. And the key to self-expression is having a shared language. Like someone has to actually want to know what you're saying about yourself, but you're not like, you have to make sure you're interesting. <laughs> like you have to have the tools to communicate. Yeah, no, that, yeah, no, that that's really good because I feel like there's um, uh, a divide, not in like the bad way necessarily, but just like kind of two, I mean, two camps, I guess, to, to say yeah. something, uh, two groups or whatever it is, uh, or two characteristics, because uh, I kind of feel similarly about, in a way, similarly uh, with having gone to New York Academy of Art. I mean, I didn't I didn't uh, look for necessarily atelier style uh, teaching afterwards um, because I'm I'm personally not sure that is exactly that my flavor or whatever or, or something like that. Yeah. But um, I actually at the time that I went to the Academy, I mean, I, I'm not sure it, it, it's it. I get the impression that it's changed in certain things. And I mean, it, yeah, everything changes, obviously. It's very di- like the point at which I went to the Academy is different than when other of my teachers went to the academy, uh, you know, they've changed their, the way they have the requirements for thesis and that kind of stuff. Like before, um, they would have a student kind of present a piece of work where they demonstrated that they understood perspective and the, the figure and that kind of stuff. And there's no, there was no such thing when I went to the school. So like the balance of con- contemporary and traditional type stuff was more how I liked it and more like in the stuff that I was interested in. There was like some talk about uh, reading papers about art and uh, articles about art. And uh, uh, there was some, I don't know if I would now say that it's art history or something, but something of the sort. There was a lot of anatomy, which is what I really was interested in. There was a lot of figure drawing, which is what I wanted. Um, uh, So there was like that balance was what I wanted. And I really like the out, what came out for me after that, um, the, just like the result in my work and whatever. And it's like, all right, so like now that I got this really concentrated injection of information, um, it, like, all right, now I will do something, will do whatever I might do with it, you know? Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, and, and so like uh, I also really liked what you were how you were using uh, terms for like the terms that you were using for photographic uh, quote unquote realism versus what was it a visual because um, and I hope that I can complain more about it in future of these episodes you know uh, or just like dig at hyper realism and that type of stuff oh, God. because. I, and, and I mean, I haven't yet because I, I don't quite know yet, you know, what my problem with it is. Yeah, I know. Um, and, and I have like, I have like abstract metaphorical sounding things that I, that I, that are starting to form, hopefully will become a more concrete, more straightforward reason for which I think it's not, I mean, not necessarily flawed, but lacking in terms of... Yeah being, I don't know, something, <laughs> you no, know, be, I yeah. I feel like I, without trying to come across as like a stodgy old man or anything, which I probably do at times, um, <laughs> a lot of times I like the things that I hate in the art world, like photorealism or, um, I don't know, installations or something like that, like I will like try to pick, like I'll concentrate on it and try to pick apart like why exactly I hate it, because in a way like finding out like why something disturbs you or why does it, something doesn't feel right actually helps you like analyze what does feel right or why like, yeah knowing the opposites but yeah i mean i don't know i think for me photorealism is just um it's like it's this limited like the photograph is an art form in itself and i think that we're so inundated with visual images of like photographs and videos and youtube and which is all great, like I love it and we're on here right now, but mm -hmm. um, with like, we think that that's accurate. Meanwhile, like when you're studying anatomy, when I'm studying anatomy, when we're learning how to draw, like working from life and seeing the model, the figure, the person that you're working from, your friend, um, in real life, there's like this three dimensionality that isn't always conveyed in a photograph. And I think there's this weird like fake prestige that people give like oh it looks like a photograph like, <laughs> yeah it, i want it to a, look like, a like alive i don't want it to look yeah it's like this flat image that was captured like in a camera so yeah yeah i think there's something also about um because i mean i'm, I'm sure you know because uh, i get the impression that you know lots of art history that um uh when when camera the when the when photography came around it was like uh chasm or something uh and and everybody or you know, i get the impression anyway that everybody was like oh my god art is gonna be or like a painting and stuff is it's gonna be obsolete or something yeah and um i don't know why we necessarily have to have like this competitive or you know maybe it's it's cool it has its uses to like compare things in terms of what is better than other things like that is yeah. cool sometimes but um other times i feel uh or i prefer to have the view that each, in the case of art, you know, art mediums, each one has, each one does something, you know, each one does, each one has their use. Yeah, each exactly. one does things that the other one cannot do. And like, that's one reason for which I don't think, for example, that if you're going to do traditional art, I don't think you should be doing photorealism because it's like, yeah. you try to do, do things that the camera cannot do. It's like the camera does something we, you know, when you draw and paint, you do something else. And it's like, I, I'm aware that they inform each other. I mean, I work from, from photographs plenty. Uh -huh. um, for what, I mean, the, re the reason is irrelevant. The thing is that it's a tool, you know, and they're, they're yeah. tools for each other as well. And it's like, they're like, it's like I, I was musing about just now, like, it's cool if there's this aspect of competition, like, oh, which one is better or whatever it is. But there's also like this whole, I mean, there's a reason for which uh, tr quote unquote traditional art, art still exists. Obviously, yeah. photography did not make anything obsolete because it yeah. obviously does things that the others that I mean, the others still continue to do things that photography cannot do. What are those things? I don't know. Uh, yeah. Same with digital art. You know, it's like the same thing now because I, mean, uh, I was musing about this with um, Max Perkins, who loves to draw just yeah. pencil and paper. But he is cur he currently has a job that where he does digital art because he's doing a uh, storyboarding and that's done in on digital now. Um, but you know, it's like, 
digital digital art is doing this thing where it's trying to it's damnedest to emulate traditional art yeah and the, like, charcoal effects yeah exactly the brushes and stuff brush. and it's that really looks to me like when you're when at least when i was starting when i was in school when i was an undergraduate when you do the master copies it's like yeah, that is exactly. that is how you find your voice so like i expect digital to kind of find its voice and start doing things that traditional cannot do by imitating traditional uh-huh. Yeah, as best as it can. So I, I, I mean, I'm, I mean, I, I gotta say, I'm kind of. Ex that sounds interesting, at least. Totally. Um, and I think there's sure. still, like, value in all those things. Yeah. I think that like, I love photography, and I often look at photog like photo photographers and for inspiration, like their compositions, their use of light. Um, I don't think photography and painting have to be like in competition mm -hmm. at all. Yeah. Just like you were saying, but I also think that um, like painting as you were saying like it's not just about capturing the image if painting was only about like relying relaying the, the information to you then it would have gone away photography does it faster and quicker yeah and quicker. you don't get paint all over your clothes like, <laughs> yeah. to sit still for you for 10 hours um but like painting isn't just about the end product it's, things aren't just about product they're also about the process and like I don't know, as an artist, I'm sure you and I feel the same way that like, we're makers, we're not just, it's not just about the end goal or the idea, it's about the, like, the creation. So. The making of, yeah. Okay, so, all right, let's get into, let's sink our teeth <laughs> into the main subject matter, I guess, of the of the podcast, uh, of the conversation. Um, and why don't you tell me what is art in your opinion? Okay, well, <laughs> let's see. Um, I watched some of your videos, so I was a little bit prepared for this, but I still think that, um, I think that there is an answer to this question. I think that, um, I think that there's an answer to the question because of the fact that for something to have a definition, for something to be something, it has to necessarily not be something else. Like, mm. for, like there's always limitation. Like, for a, a zebra to be a zebra, it's like a horse with stripes. Like, it can't yeah. be a cat. Like, there's, yeah, there's yeah. things that make it what it is. And so, um, very odd <laughs> analogy. I don't know. No, I get it. I get it. It's good. <laughs> um, so, I do think that there is a definition for art. And I think that in the past, people didn't really have to ask this question because everybody like understood inherently what it was. But I think because after like postmodernism and different things, like just the doors went open and we could just decide for ourselves what art was. But um, I like to rely on like the Greek and Latin definition of like what the word means and mm. like our word for art comes from the um, Latin ars, artis, which means like something that's skillfully made. And then the Greek word that um, came, the, La the Latin word came from a Greek word, which meant to prepare. Mm -hmm. And so for me, like when we, art is like a big word, like it's not only like there's, there's fine art, which means like paintings and sculptures, but like art in general, um, is like making something well, like something skillfully done, something skillfully made. So like there's an art to like bread making or an art to um, quilting. Or, like there's so many different arts, but like art in the definition of the word to me is something well done. What fine art is, like what the arts of the beautiful is, is like a different definition for me, but like art in general is... Um, yeah. Art is something well made. <laughs> like skillfully made. Like it's the pro it's like um to make something, like the process of making with skill. Mm -hmm. I'm taking a note. I yeah, just I, in the Yeah, it's because I'm like tippy dabbing so over here and it's like I don't want it to see me. <laughs> I had the same problem I had the same issue with uh I have to figure that out in for future uh episodes of how I'm gonna take notes. Because in the one with uh, Roberto that you, I don't know how far in you saw, but he was like saying things that sounded cool, and I was like, I must write it down. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was, I was writing it on the on the laptop, but then it's like it, I was like, this is going to look like I'm replying to a message, and that is unacceptable. <laughs> no, um, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, but yeah, I have to figure that out. And then for, for Alexander's episode, I like reached back for a notebook, but then it's like, that's going to jostle the table, the laptop. I have to figure it out. Okay. I know, get the lighting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, I'm slowly uh, polishing the whole thing. Okay. So yeah, I think I completely agree with you about the, the definition having been marred by just movements of art or whatever, or just, well, actually postmodernism is kind of not, not just and modernism and modernity or whatever. They're not just art movements. They're just cultural, all encompassing things of uh, a philosophy anyway, because let me tell you, I mean, you know, I mean, I get the impression that, you know, a lot of, I mean, you're, you're offering classes and everything, which I'm going to ask you about towards the end uh, uh, about uh, Re Renaissance and Baroque. Um, so, you know, you obviously know something and it's like, I mean, know enough about this stuff that you want to talk to other people about it so you can share what you yeah. know. Uh, but I just barely, especially in the previous episode with uh, Alexander, I was like, yeah, postmodernism is at fault. And it's like, I, and it, and you know, I, I, um, I've gotten grief before with good reason, uh, for using words that I don't know the meaning of. And, uh, yeah. I don't actually know, uh, or have not read at all about postmodernism. And it's funny because like, can postmodernism be defined? No, of course it can't. So like by default, it's like, can I use the term or whatever? Anyway, whatever. I, of course we can use the term. The thing is that, yeah. um, no, I don't, yeah. it's just the same thing with what art means now. It's like, sorry, for example, my nose is all stuffed, but, um, um, um yeah, with postmodernism, like we're trying to define what its effects are and then Nothing is definable because that's as act the actual. Act what it actually is is this, like, <laughs> lack of meaning, lack of definition. So, yeah, no, but at the same time, it's like I can't, at least in the case of art, and I mean, I think I'm not sure if from what I was reading, I I mean because I was. I was reading and not reading at the same time because I'm reading Wikipedia and you know, Wikipedia is uh, iffy in terms of research, but I was, I wanted to start somewhere. Um, but, uh, you know, both, both modernism and postmodernism both mentioned Duchamp. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, I, after reading about it, I still blame him for things. Um, <laughs> yeah, but, <laughs> yeah, but, but, uh, it seems, I mean, I think he, he, he had this whole thing about just declaring verbally that something is art. Um, and then implying or insinuating that by almost like God on, in the Genesis, just saying something makes it so in a way. It's let like, there be, yeah. let there be art. This mouse is art. So, so it's like, so that implies that then everything is art. And it's like, and you know, uh, from a previous episode as well, um, with, uh, Max Perkins and he didn't say it in the episode, but he said it while we were studying together because uh, we graduated the same year. He said something like, if everything is important, then nothing is important. And that is applicable to everything in the sense that if everything is art, yes. then nothing is art, you know? And it's like, that is, that is a terrible thing to say. It's like, it's yeah. like, it, it like, just again, like by saying, by saying it in a way, just negates all value of it. So it's exactly. like, why, why even do, why even, it's like, okay, say that you're a postmodernist and it's like, then why bother doing it? If, if it's like, if it's not art then it's well, like it why require, do you you know if it doesn't require any doing if you don't have <laughs> right. any action whatsoever yeah like that's why that's why even though it's such a simple um definition saying that art is something skillfully made both words are really important to me because you wouldn't like i don't know 300 years ago you wouldn't you would be like yeah duh you make it but <laughs> yeah yeah, just like you were saying, like, let there be this urinal is now. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. and it's like, I think, uh, uh, my nemesis? No, it's not my nemesis. Anyway, Damien Hurst, he's like, because uh, I, I read about him yeah. uh, in the past, and he was like, yeah, ideas, having ideas is art. And it's like, bro, no, because because you know a friend, a Everybody friend of mine has ideas. It's like, yeah, any moron can have a fucking idea. I mean, it's like, no. Anyway, whatever. Um, let's, no, I, I, I don't want to sit too long in the vitriol that I feel towards no. that. Um, no, totally. uh, <laughs> but okay. So, um, no, it's just that, yeah, I don't, I don't want to sit too long in the, the hatred of it when at the same time, you know, it's not all necessarily, not everything is absolutely negative, you know, because, totally. yeah, because like, I mean, in my opinion, anyway, I, um, you can tell me what you think about it. Um, I think 
because that is like the reconciliation that I I, co I come and go in anger and, rec to, and reconciliation with that whole thing because I feel like at the same time it's exactly what allows us as artists to do whatever we want in a way. Yeah. So it's like it gives us the freedom to like it's like yeah like no now we're not bound to studying in this very strict way through which then you can like do pers personal work what we call personal work yeah. now uh, to show that and then hope to get a commission and then hope to get into the court of someone he's I mean yeah. you see what I'm saying so it's like th those terrible things that we were just talking about are what give us in the present the freedom it's like we're still benefiting from from that from from that in yeah. that capacity you know I, I see what you're saying I I also uh, I somewhat agree with you like I get I, I agree with the um the point that you're making but I don't necessarily know that the Duchamp allowed that to happen I think first of all I, yeah I don't think like Duchamp is like like yes he did do things that were stupid and that we oh, yeah. but I think that um like the general ideas of that age were caused by like were like a current that was happening based on like just I I, I think like I'm not like being all accurate here prop this is just like an intuition but I feel like it's all caused by like World War Two and like nihilism and World War One yeah just like the the lack of meaning that people were experiencing and the horror and the like irony and um like making fun of things that had meaning was one result because like you have like bitterness like i'm not saying that's not like a appropriate response but like that when, once you're faced with horror you either like you either you can do one or two things and one of the things you can do is just say yeah life is meaningless and so mm -hmm. um I think that Duchamp wasn't like, I think there was like a current of many people, many feelings in the current. Um, but I do think like, yeah, so like we can do whatever we want now. And so the, the floodgate, like everything is like any, there's any possibility, but I don't, I feel like artists, like I'm, yeah, I'm glad that we don't have to rely on a court, uh, some king or like we belong to some guild in the renaissance. Yeah. You have to like you have to paint this altarpiece this way, and um, if you're Leonardo da Vinci, you just like do part of it, and then you run away, like like um, <laughs> um, and then you ghost the bat, the pope that hired you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Michelangelo. But um, so I do think that like being an artist today, there are like there's so many possibilities. There's so many different mediums. There's so many different tools at our disposal. Um, but I think that like artists. No matter what your limitations are, I think the artists have always had the like being an artist is about being creative. So I feel like there's always the possibility to break the boundaries that are supposedly around you. But I think that if no boundaries exist anymore, it kind of hinders creativity sometimes, just because um, I don't know. From a personal experience, you kind of need if like everything is possible it can sometimes overwhelm you yeah there's if you have certain constraints you can fly off of those constraints and they're like building blocks that allow you to jump off of them but anyway no that may, that makes a lot of sense like that amount of did you say freedom yes i think so uh, oh possibility yeah like that amount of freedom and possibility is for sure really overwhelming and no that makes perfect sense um I heard to a I, heard, I listened to a clip by uh, Jordan Peterson recently where he he tells he's talking about this exercise that he plays with his stu with, that he played past tense with his students to demonstrate what you're saying where he says he would just like pick one of the kids out of the out of the the classroom and he was like all right let's play a game you and me okay and then the kid is like all right and so then Jordan just says all right your move yeah, so it's like the, the the kid is like just frozen there because obviously there are, there's no rules that have been set there's no description of what the game is like there's no there's no guidelines of any any sort and stuff so it's like it's something like that as well and I mean I, I it reminded me of that what you were saying anyway and I mean I completely totally. agree yeah. And, yeah, and and I completely agree and uh, I definitely feel like um 
I mean, I, I guess uh, another discussion for another time, maybe, or you know, maybe we can get to some of it uh, in in this conversation, would be it was it worth it? <laughs> yeah, was it worth it? You know, because. Um, you know, at the same time, the result of the First World War and then you know, what led to the Second World War, all that stuff. I mean, there were definitely lots of people that suddenly were like, all right, what is the fucking point of anything? But at the same time, yes. lots of people were really uh, um, not, I mean, patriotic, yes, for their, you know, for their countries, their own countries and stuff, and just like defending the concept of quote unquote Western freedom and all of this stuff and because of what they were fighting against uh, the Nazis and the communists. Um, but, you know, so at the same time, there was, there was I, I guess I'm trying to kind of think in a, give credit to those people as well, or rather Probably, to like yes. give credit to the event as well, that it also, the people who still, who the event made them care even more about things. Yes, they were like, so oh, this is, so this is even more meaningful somehow now, you know? Yes, definitely. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I don't think, um... I think there was like yet yeah, like two choices. You could either be, you'd rise up to the, like rise up to your potential and be courageous, or you could despair. And I'm not saying I know which one I would do, but yeah. Um, uh, but I yeah I think also I think it's inevitable. Like, I don't think, um, I think that we have, like I don't I'm not very pessimistic at all like about the art world because I feel like. Yes, there's so much stupidity. There's bananas taped to the wall, sold for a lot of yeah. money. Invisible sculptures, like anything goes. Like it's completely like the emperor's new clothes. But <laughs> yeah. I feel like it's almost like a, a possibility for like a a new a rebirth, like a new renaissance mm -hmm, where mm -hmm. people that people like you and I, we have to figure out like, well, what is it that I love to do? What do, what do I want to do? And just doing your thing and putting your heart and soul into something and the more people come back to that the yeah. better the world will be so yeah no completely agreed um th yeah for sure that and to me that sounds like lead by example yeah where where yeah it's like i i totally like you know that's that's why i'm doing the the conversation about art and that's why i'm reading about it and that's why i'm uh trying trying to just kind of calibrate the definition of both art and beauty because i mean i have mentioned in a previous previous episode i mean the ulterior motive like the not not the ulterior motive like the the spark is i want to sell my work <laughs> and it's like i don't want it to be polluted with sarcasm about art because because that that is how i felt about it before when I when 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 I was more accepting or just felt like I had to deal with the whole postmodernist thing I was like all right I yeah. guess I'll have to compete with a fucking banana and some fucking duct tape that gets <laughs> sold I think twice for millions it's the like what it eats it <laughs> yeah yeah it's fucking ridiculous and it's like it's like all right no I, I don't have to I don't have to yeah. you know there's room for everyone there's absolutely room for everyone and and uh you know I just want to Anyway, yeah. the mm -hmm. thing is that yeah, I want I I, I want to kind of bring that for myself because I, I I yeah like I don't want the work to I don't want that association to be made with my work. Yeah. Totally. Um, and okay, so um, what is then beauty in your opinion? Huh. Yeah. Um. I do think I think beauty is. Again, I think beauty has a definition. I know that we have a lot of sayings like, um, you know, all the quotes. Like, beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. Yeah. One man's trash is another man's treasure. Like, I do think that, um, I think that beauty is in the eyes of the whole beholder, but I actually think that it's, I think beauty is objective, but I think that mm. not everybody has the eyes to see it. And so I'm not always like I kind of kind of hate Bouguereau and like different. Like, uh huh. Like, like I don't think that beauty is like cake and icing like all the time. I mean I think flowers are beautiful. I think that like I love to draw portraits of my sister. Like I love like things that we always think of when we think of beauty, like sunsets, flowers, beautiful women, beautiful babies' faces. Like all that is is beautiful. Yeah. But I think that. Um, it depends on like beauty to me is 
things that are right, I suppose. Like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. beauty is like when you encounter like. For me, at least, I, beauty is an encounter with reality, mm-hmm. and not the reality of. Like, I guess this is a confusing thing, but I'm still, like, trying to figure this out myself, honestly. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. Um, I feel like people are always trying to give us a dose of reality. So you read, like, um, Lord of the Flies, and you're like, okay, this is reality. Yeah, yeah. And I don't necessarily... And then you read, um, look at a Bougaro painting, and you're like, oh, this is this is sugar-coated. And I, I do mm-hmm. think Bougaro is sugar-coated. But then you look at it like a something that is truly beautiful... Or like a fairy tale, like, oh, well, this is sugar-coated. But I think it's also possible for things to be, like, coated with slime. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I think that, like, Lord of the Flies is different, like, there, there is horror in the world. There is, dep- like, there is so much tragedy and horror. But I think that when you have a worldview that is only focused on the present and, like, negates the option to have a choice in the matter and like denies the fact of the future and a pe- like a pre- past and a future i think that um that that isn't depicting reality any more than things that are sugar coated are depicting reality they're both mm. um they're both coding it with something and i think mm. that like a rembrandt painting of like an old woman or old man like you're 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 encountering a truth about somebody and they're beautiful and yes they're old and they're like there's something beautiful in that honesty I think I don't know if I'm making any sense but um I don't know I think beauty is like as Don Keith says like beauty is truth truth beauty but I don't think that beauty is it's like beauty is not like the servant of truth or anything like beauty is its own thing but mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think everything is like interconnected and beauty reveals and also charms. Like, I think that um, beauty doesn't, like, it, it re- reveals truth, but it also doesn't need to make sense. <laughs> like, uh-huh. I think that um, a lot of times, like, with art, especially in the atelier world, it's all about, like, not all the time, but sometimes, and photorealism for this matter, too. Like, mm. It's, oh, it's really impressive. Like, it's really, really well done. Mm. Wow, it's really big or something like that. Yeah, yeah. But I don't think that, like, art or beauty for the matter is, like, it's not always like yeah. Sometimes when you're really good at something, you might want to show off to other people. Be like, look how good I am, mm-hmm. much better than you guys. <laughs> you want to have like a sense of like I'm I'm so great. But I think the best artists and the artists that really really encounter beauty and share beauty with others, it's not really about them. It's about what they love. Like I think beauty. I I think beauty is impossible without love. I think that beautiful art, like art that really is going to touch you is impossible. Like, if the person who's made it, like, I don't know if you know, like, Lucian Freud or different, like, figurative painters. Like, I look at the figure that they're painting and I, like, I don't feel like they love the person or, like, I don't think that they Mm -hmm. actually see them as a person. Like, they kind of look like a hunk of meat or something like Mm -hmm, that. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean that, like, not everything has to be, like, a Birth of Venus Botticelli where it's this, like, Neoplatonic, like... yeah spiritual thing either like there's like some like rubens like very sensual paintings but there's like a humanity aspect to that painting like rubens that like lucian Ford doesn't have and i think that in order for something to be beautiful it has to have love like you have to be seeing like in a rembrandt painting like the old woman like he's there's like the canvas there's the portrait painter there's the portrait person speaking their portrait painted and there's the painting and somewhere like in between there's this encounter I suppose like there's something that happens on the canvas that is like you're the creator but you're also being affected by what you're creating and I think that if you're like all in control of what you're doing like I think that in a weird way it's like there's different canons of beauty and things that we all agree like oh like it's beautiful, like, when you're making a painting, like, this kind of composition. Like, I definitely agree with that, but I think that you can't, just like you can't, like, a child, at least when I was younger, I would always, like, um, 
be like really perfectionistic and always want to get like perfect grades. Mm-hmm. And I remember like starting it on a paper and saying like, oh, I have to get an A plus. And I was thinking about the end result so much that I was having such a hard time actually like writing the paper. Mm-hmm. And I think that you can't like with beauty, like you can't say like, this is going to be a beautiful paper. Mm-hmm. Like you can't, you have to like, you can't be the master. You have to, the bit. Sorry about, like, wait, no one's really stopping. You <laughs> no can't worries. be the master. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, you're receiving something, although, as well, even though you're the creator. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's how I've experienced it. And when I look at art that I love, that's what I feel from the art that I love. That last bit really reminds me of... Uh, um classic Nietzsche I mean he's the one is he is he's the one that said that when you look into the abyss the abyss looks into you or whatever I I think so yeah okay uh, I think it's him also and it reminds me a little bit or it's I feel like it's similar in a way uh, with what you're saying in the sense that uh, um, when you at least us when we're making stuff we are um, we're exerting change on that surface and then at the same time that process by you know by that process the surface what we're making is also changing us in a way yes definitely. Um, and that is uh what you were saying about love also is also really cool and i mean um because i get like crushes on my work on the drawings <laughs> that i make it, just because I'm just like, oh my god, you're so beautiful, or something, and it's like, and it's like that is, in large part, what makes me enjoy the act of, you know, even if like, I mean, this one last one that I've not not the Hades drawing that I've been that I've been posting, but the other one with the long neck, the yeah. other one with the long neck, it's it's oh my god, I started that sometime, I don't know, it's been like four months or something, but I'm like just like still here, oh my god, I'm gonna work on you. And it's still exciting, and I'm leaving the portrait for last because that is what I'm most excited about, you know? So it's like, I'm being really patient. The last and... bite, the best bite of the cookie. So oh my god, yes. It's like, yeah, it's like that last bite that you, when somebody is like, hey, can I have some? And you're like, couldn't you ask me earlier? It's like, this one is the best one, are you kidding? <laughs> you, everyone knows this. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, that's a really okay. good, that's a really good uh, comparison. Um, yeah. But I, I would like it if you went a little bit more into the, um, there is, what you were saying about how there is objective beauty, or uh, there are things that are objective, objectively beautiful, or, because um, it also reminds me a little bit of something that we talked, that I talked about with Alexander uh, Sokas, uh, because uh, when we, yeah, we were talking about beauty as well, I think, about how, um, appreciation of something takes a degree of effort and participation on the part yes. of the of the viewer yeah and i feel like that part of that uh, part of that effort and participation sometimes is just i don't know knowing about art in a way it's because uh, and i mean that that's actually speaking for myself because i consider myself extremely ignorant about art it's like i don't know really that much art history at all I don't know, or really, I don't care that much about painting. For example, it's like I'm, but at the same time, it's well, it's you like invested yourself well in drawings. So <laughs> you've made up. Well, thank you, something good. <laughs> but the, and I'm saying that because, and and, and I'm saying I'm, I'm mentioning the aspect of ignorance on my part because, like, when I go to the museum or, or some museum or something, and I'm not talking about MoMA, okay? I'm yeah. talking about the Met where they have the real stuff. <laughs> And it's like, I, I find myself sometimes just looking at something and be like, all right, I mean, I guess, <laughs> yeah. you know, and I that's mean, like, I'm that's aware that's ignorant. Valid. What? I, I think, no, I don't, not necessarily. I mean, sometimes I think, um, well, I think of it, I, I, I consider myself ignorant anyway, but yes, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> oh, I, well, I think like what you were talking with Alex, like, yes, like, um, it does require an engagement of the viewer. You have to like allow yourself, like. I think it's very easy to like go through life. It takes like effort on the viewer's part. It takes submission. Like you're giving, you're like stopping. You're not in control anymore, and you're letting something affect you. Mm. And um, I guess what I think, like I think that beauty is objective because I think that the world, in my view, 
and this is not something that everybody believes, but I believe that there's like inherent value in things. And I think that because things like a tree or a landscape or like a river is like inherently mm-hmm. valuable, like there's value in that. And so it's like, how could it not be? How could, like, if, if something's like, In my opinion, like, if there's a beautiful sunset happening, if you, it's not like, obje- it's not subjective. Like, if one person doesn't think it's beautiful, <laughs> there's something wrong with them. No yeah, yeah, saying. yeah. Um, but I think that, um, I don't know, when I was younger, like, there'd be different things I didn't like. Like, I, I still hate, like, honey, for example. But everybody was like, oh, you're like, my like, dad kept bees. And, like, you, like, have bees. You don't even like honey. And I'm like, like well, the thing is, like, I concede, like, honey is, like, there is a value to honey, honey's great, I just don't like it myself, but, like, I think sometimes, like, you can tell when something is worth, worthy of appreciating, you just don't appreciate it yet. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, I think, I mean, like, I obviously think there's tastes, and I don't think that everybody is capable of understanding everything, and I think that knowing something, like, loving and knowing are intermingled and I think that um, certain things might be more uh, cryptic and you might need to like translate them in order to understand them but Mm -hmm. um, I also at the same same time I also feel like if you have your guard down you if you don't have all your defenses up beauty like for me at least when you walk into like a cathedral in Italy because I'm in Italy, I will be in Italy in a few days, um, which is where I study. But when you walk into a cathedral, like there's such a delightful like celebration of of life, like of color, of line, of design, and you can't help feeling like a sense of awe and like a sense mm. of complete like wonder. Like it's not about the artist. Like, you don't even know all the time who all the artists are that did, like, the little tiles and the little stained glass. Yeah, yeah. All the little intricacies. But, like, there's this... Like, beauty isn't this, like, flimsy, like, oh, look at this little, like, pretty flower. Like, it can be... Beauty can be both, like, quiet and grand. Like, I think mm-hmm. that it's... I don't know. <laughs> I think that it is, a, like, a source of, like... um in um, the word beauty in Greek means to call. And I always think of that because um, like beauty isn't just like it is, it's asking something for you. It's like kind of pulling you in. It's like mm-hmm. seducing in a way, but, um, but definitely, like I definitely think it requires, you have to allow it to happen to you. But mm-hmm. I think that if you do, like it might, there might be something in the painting or in the music or in the book that you don't, you won't know until you let yourself experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that part about allowing, allowing it, whatever it is that you're contemplating to tell you something, whatever it is. Um, that seems to be pretty important uh, because, because yeah, like when you were talking about landscape type stuff, it's like. Um, I I, I wouldn't accept anyone telling me, like, oh, a mountain? Yeah. It's like, it's, it's, you know, like, I I have a very hard time believing that, or, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if somebody does to just to be, like, a dick. Um, Yeah, exactly. But, 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 yeah, but, and at the same time, and that's something, something also that we went, uh, that we mused about um, with Alexander, that um, I get the impression that in a way, or... I don't know, maybe maybe I am right about it. Um, I feel like that resistance on the part of whomever it might be to to letting themselves be impressed by nature in that way, like, you know, the universe or just like a, a work of art that kind of, in a way, might probably speak to that grandiosity as well. Um, yeah. Just, I, I feel like the vastness of that the you know i feel like it makes people feel small and it makes them feel yeah just very i mean overwhelmed also i i suppose they're just like oh my god this 
Um, and also, you know, like the subl sublimity, the, I mean, sublime, the sublime yeah. is just, I mean, I, I think it's friggin' awesome. And it's like, if it, if it, yeah. be, because, you know, I, I don't know if you, uh, a few years back, there was uh, this image caught by the Hubble telescope. Uh, it was called the Hubble Ultra Deep Field or something like that, where the Hubble stared at a spot in the universe for like almost two weeks or something. And, you know, light yeah. takes a while to get here or whatever. And so like the image that it got, every little dot of whatever was like a galaxy, you know, Crazy. like the size of our galaxy. And, and I'm getting like goosebumps. Um, and, and it's like, you know, lots of people because of, I don't know, like there's this association of like oh, science and the big bang. It's yeah. like, oh yeah, atheist <laughs> or whatever it is. But at yeah. the same time, it's like, uh, I really liked, uh, Carl Sagan's approach, although I've only ever read Cosmos. So I don't know if that's like the entirety of his, but he, he, he was obviously humbled but still really adored the magnanimity of everything. Yes. And, and you know, like the, the, like the fact that it has happened and the fact that we're here, it, just with everything, all of the things that have led to this present moment, everything is just like, it's like, it's, it's, it's a fucking miracle that we're, <laughs> that we're here. Yes. Um, and it's like, you know, that's really very close. And uh, I'm, I mean, I'm starting to think about why, or t maybe I'm starting to, glimmer at an under uh glean at an understanding of when like jordan peterson says that art is divine and it yeah. gives a window to the divinity and stuff and it's like i totally went off the rails of what i started saying i went on a tangent but it's like like that magnanimity of everything it's like you know lots of humans lots of us feel like we have to dominate it or subvert yes. it uh and well, i think it's like a feeling of wanting to be in control like yes life that makes is a lot of safer sense. if you're in control yes and However, you're not able to ever like receive anything if you're always in charge and like part of, I mean, like every aspect of the, everything wonderful in life takes, takes risk and takes vulnerability, like love and receiving, like allowing yourself to be affected by something. It, yeah. it all requires like laying down your arms a little bit, um, but yeah, I definitely agree with what you were saying. Um, I think that, um, like, our, like it's, it's, I think that sometimes it's viewed as childish to um, have a sense of wonder or to, mm. like, have a sense of mystery. Like, but I don't know. I think that, like, how could you not, like, even though things are explained and there's definitions and everything, there's still like every single person that walks by, like there's a whole story inside of somebody that you don't know about. Like when you're a portrait painter, like I'll have a model sitting next to like sitting there and I'll be painting them. And like the whole time you're painting them, there's a whole, like they've had a whole life that you haven't, you've only yes. like encountered them for these like three hours that you're working with them. How could you not have a sense of like curiosity at least like this cu curiosity and like wondering like not even like wonder with a capital w but like like huh like what is this and like mm -hmm. i think you have to like i think there's a sense of like know-it-allness or like selfishness or like a feeling that you have it all like there's so much that you you're just like a tiny person if you're really smart like there's way too much in the world to experience. You're just like this tiny little vessel and there's so much to bring in. So like, why not allow that to happen? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's definitely, I, I really liked what you were saying just now about, I mean, uh, relating to what we're talking about it, when you're, when you're dealing, when you're not dealing, that's, that's wrong, that's not accurate. When you're interacting with another person, there's not just what you said about, not only what you said about the fact that, that person has had this whole life, uh, you know, things have happened, things haven't happened, they made decisions, they didn't make decisions, and whatever it is about their life, they ended up sitting there with you. Yeah. And you're working with them, but at the same time, and that's another thing that I, I heard from Jordan Peterson the first time, it's like, each one of us, it's, it's like the embodiment of history. 
of all human history. And not just human history, just all of the history of the universe. Because, just because all that stuff preceded us, it's like, yeah. that's why you're here. You know? Yeah, well, and that's I'll... really cool. It's super cool. Yeah, it's also, like... Also, like, working with the live model, like, it's such a gift to, like, have somebody, like, allow, like, not only, like, the viewer when you're looking at a painting has to allow themselves to receive the beauty, but, like, there's certain times when you're trying to paint somebody where certain people, like, won't let themselves be shown, mm -hmm. and I think that we've all got, like, a story behind us, and some people are more readable than others, but, like, whether you're easily readable or not, like, there's so much that's, like, embedded in, like, I don't know, like, a rubber painting, like, in all those wrinkles in the face, like, every single wrinkle isn't just a wrinkle, it's also, like, I don't know, like, a coming to grips with something, like, there's something about a person's face, there's, like, a story and, like, a meaning and a significance to, like, everything, so. Yeah, you know, that's, like, that's, that's one of the reasons for which I have lots of opinions, at least, about um, uh, aesthetic surgery type stuff. Oh, me too. Because it's like, you know, I mean, I can't say that I necessarily like that I'm, like, getting wrinkles or something. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, it's cool that, like, the nasolabial fold is going to become uh, a mark on the skin from smiling or just talking in general. Yeah. For example, I really like, for example, the... Uh, furrowed brow I love I love I love that and so like the 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 grooves left from all the frowning whether regardless of why the person was frowning it's like they were concentrating or whatever it is it's like I really I don't I don't know it's like um I, I think you know it's among many other things it's like the it's like the response of the body to a repetition of a movement yeah and it's like um, that reaction of the body in that way, that response, not reaction, that response or uh, of the body to something, even if it's just the facial expressions that you have made throughout yeah. your life, it's like that is that it's is something. Into your face forever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's something, you know, and it's like um, even even though um, I there's definitely um, arguments in favor of aesthetic surgery. At the same time, it's like. It's like a denial of that, um, yeah. something that you earn with age. Definitely. You I, know? I definitely agree with you. I mean, I think that, obviously, like, everybody can make their own decisions, but um, I think that there's something, like, um, there's something beautiful about each stage of life. Like, um, when I was, like, younger, I had this rose bush, and I had this, like, really pretty, like, purplish reddish rose it was so pretty and I cut it and I forgot about it because I'm really bad at taking care of plants <laughs> um, but I came back to it and it had like dried and it was so pretty dried like I was so um it was, it was almost prettier dried than it was fresh even though it was so beautiful fresh mm -hmm. and I still have it actually but, that's um, cool I was thinking like this rose is like like um like an older person like there's still like it might be like a dried flower <laughs> instead of a mm -hmm. fresh <laughs> like delicate like there's this like more subtle like when there's like someone who's really young and like fresh like they might like might like look at them and be like wow but like there's this quiet beauty that you have to like the subtle beauty that you have to like you don't want to crush it like you don't want to crush the flat like yeah you yeah have to, um, like you have to be quiet yourself in order to it or to hear it if that makes sense <laughs> it does it does um and i think that's a really lovely place to close it to to close off the conversation um and all right thank you very much for talking with me uh because yeah, thank that was you so much for having me yeah that that was that was really awesome uh why don't you tell whomever uh, our listeners and watchers where they can find your work and what are you up to lately if you have anything yeah. upcoming any upcoming projects well um first of all i want to say like thank you so much for having me i've um i love like seeing everything you're doing it's 
Instagram. And, um, and that's where you can, everybody can find me. I'm, uh, that's like the only social media platform that I use. So I am under Rachel Magdalene Art. Yeah. Um, and yeah, just at Rachel Magdalene Art. And um, I do have a website as well, but um, it's rachelmagdalenart.com. And <laughs> nice consistent I, usage um, of name. If you want to like, you could always shoot me a DM on Instagram. But, yeah. <laughs> but um, if you wanted to like send me an email like, with any like questions or anything, like, Rachel Magdalene Art at gmail.com is my email. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. Um, well, I'm going back to Italy in a few days to continue my uh, studies at the Charles Cecil Studio, and I'm going to be teaching two online classes over Zoom. Um, one, they're they're connected, but like you could take either like they're one flows into another, but they're also mm-hmm. like, separate. Um, they're on the Renaissance. The first is the Origins of the Renaissance, and the second one is the Birth of the Baroque. They're both on the Renaissance, but they're focusing on like what led up to the um, the Florentine artist artistic tradition, and then the second one is Venice and Rome and the Renaissance art that like led to the Baroque. So uh, I'm going to be teaching that in February to June, and they're like both of them recorded. Yeah, so there's eight weeks. The first one, the second one's eight weeks as well and they're live but they're also recorded and mm. um basically my idea was like i've been living in italy and when i was younger i went to italy and like you can learn art history through reading an art history book but there's so many hidden gems and so many yeah. beautiful things that you have to like actually encounter but of course not everybody can jump on an airplane and join me over there so um the purpose of the class is to make the renaissance as um encounterable as possible like i want to um share all the things that i love so much but also discuss like what led up to these things and like also through the eyes of an artist what is yeah of course design elements and whatnot but yeah so that's what i'm up to okay that sounds really awesome uh i'm i'm gonna put uh links to uh, Rachel, to, to, your, to your Instagram and also to your website, and through the website, people can find the classes, right? Yes, definitely. Okay. Um, under but, okay, okay. Um, but because uh, I feel like on the link that you have on Instagram, the link tree that you have there, there's one yes. that's direct to the classes. I think I'll put that too, just in case. Yeah, perfect. That'd be great. Um, all right. So, well, um, Thank you, Rachel, for joining me. Thank you very much for your time and your words and your thoughts. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. Feel free to let Rachel and I know what you think of this conversation in the comments section. And also, I invite you to subscribe to my audiovisual channel because I have more of these conversations planned. And I invite you to share this video with all your friends and frenemies. See you next time. (laughs) 